Hi friends, I I have a day off today and I came out to town to have a cup of coffee and take a little stroll in, in, in town. And I was, after reading my scriptures today, I, I have some thoughts. We continue to follow the war in the Middle East, Hamas and uh, Israel. And the latest news that I've gotten is that US is uh, putting pressure on Israel to de-escalate, uh, but Israel thinks like it has to defend itself. It has the right to defend itself, and they believe like if they put down their weapons, their people will be killed and chased out of their land, and they feel they have the right to defend their land. So I was reading chapter 23, 24, 25 in, uh, in, the, math, uh, in, in the Gospel according to Matthew, and um, the thing that really caught my attention was when he talks to the people in Jerusalem, he tells them that his God has sent them prophets and they have killed them. But he says something, he says, I will, I will not come back to Jerusalem until they say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That basically means that there must be people in Jerusalem that will welcome Jesus Christ. There must be people who have already known Christ, the Messiah, the living God, the Son of God. So that, that encourages me to know that even though we see lots of war going on, that God promises that He will return to, to Jerusalem where His people will welcome Him. And the second thing that caught my attention was when He's actually talking to the religious leaders, the scribes, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, these are people that are, they are religious leaders and uh, Bible teachers, if you may say so. People who know the laws of the book, uh, uh, the biblical laws, Torah and stuff like that. And he is really, really at them. He goes on and on. He says, woe upon you, woe upon you. And he calls them fools and he calls them you blind and things like that. And when you read that whole chapter, you kind of feel like, is this that gentle, mild, forgiving, loving Jesus? It is the same person. When we read those verses, you realize the principles that Jesus sets for leaders. These are his standards. He's not going to play the fool with the leaders that will speak on his behalf and teach his word. And then you go on to read in chapter 24 and 25, he tells you that there will, there will be false prophets and false messiahs that will come, do wonders and things like that. But he says, do not believe them. Do not believe them. Then he gives us one last tip where he tells us like, until the gospel of the kingdom is preached, the end of the age will not come. That is the sign that I am looking for. Has his message been shared? presented. It, it's not about have people accepted him and become believers. That's not the thing. Have we done our job? Are we sharing the message of the kingdom? There are 66 books called the Bible. That's the one message. That's the same message throughout the whole Bible collection is that God created mankind. Mankind fell into sin. But God, from the very beginning, has done everything that needs to be done to reconcile us to himself and redeem us and to always be with us because he is our Emmanuel. And he will always, always be with us and do whatever that needs to be done to make sure we find him. Let us not be like those five foolish virgins, but be like the five wise ones. Let's listen to the voice and hearken unto his teaching and say yes to the Lord. And remember those who uh, religious leaders, preachers and Bible teachers, let us take this seriously, that he does not take it lightly when we play the fool and try to interpret it in a way that is, that is suitable for the people that we are trying to please. Let us not compromise with his word. Thank you, that's what I thought today. Bye. Have a good day. Praise you, Lord. Thank you for opening the way, Father God, to return to you, to return to the heart of love 
and the way is open because of Jesus Christ, your Son. And we thank you, Father, that you have given us leaders and your book that will remind us of everything that you have done for us, Father God. We thank you, Father. We pray for our countries. We pray for our churches, Father. We pray for our Bible teachers that they will not compromise or water down your scriptures, Father. We thank you, dear God. We thank you and we praise you. Give you glory, Lord. We give you Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. For you are our Lord, our King, our Savior, our brother, our friend. We bless you. We bless you. We Holy Spirit. Oh, you are our helper. You live with us. You live in us. And you guide us. You remind us of everything that Jesus has taught us, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. You are wonderful and marvelous. Just as the deer panteth for the water. So our hearts and soul, Father, longs after you. We love you, Father God, as the deer panteth for the water. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We praise your holy name, Lord. You are our creator. You give food to all your creation. You take care of, of this earth. Hi, friends. I'm back again. Today is the 21st of uh, May, uh, the war in Israel has ended or there's a ceasefire, but unfortunately there are riots within the country. Hebron and I, I just got, a, got news from some friends that in the Temple Mount, um, after Friday prayers, there seems to have happened riots and, the, and it seems that the Israeli police are in there trying to calm things down. The clash between Hamas and Israel has stopped for the time being. The riots and the unrest within the country seem to continue. So it's good for us to continue to keep praying for peace and keep our eyes on the Prince of Peace. He will come back. He will return. He's enthroned in our hearts but he will be enthroned in the city of david that will happen because that's what he has promised okay i just wanted to give you an update because in the beginning of this video i said us was putting pressure and israel should stop the war de-escalate so i wanted to just give you an update that but we still need to pray for the country for the people the jews and the arabs and the whole world okay bye